In this video, we are going to talk about how you can use custom properties on rooms and players effectively to synchronize game states between all players. My name is Oliver Eberlei and you are watching the Sky Arena photo tutorial. Multiplayer games often have different game modes to introduce more variety to the players. We want to expand our prototype to not only include Capture the Flag, but also Team Deathmatch and Free for All Deathmatch. I've also created a second map to show you how you can synchronize map loading between players. Let's start with introducing how we set up the different game modes, their mechanics and user interfaces. Then I'm going to talk about how each of the relevant information gets shared by all players. It all starts with the Game Mode Manager. This class tells the different game modes which one is currently being played and serves as a basic access point for all the classes to the active game mode. When a new map is loaded, this class finds out which mode is active by accessing the room's custom properties. Each room exposes the current map queue and which entry is currently being played, so this is a simple case of accessing the custom properties of the current room. Next, we call the setup and teardown methods of all game modes, depending on which one is currently being played. The active game mode is also stored, so all classes can reach it easily through the game mode manager by reading the static property current game mode. We have three different game modes to illustrate a couple of different multiplayer aspects. Deathmatch has the simplest implementation of all game modes. It simply counts down 5 minutes until the round is finished and displays the leaderboards at the end to show which player has the most kills. Team Deathmatch introduces the concept of teams. This has consequences for scoring and also which player can attack who, because friendly fire is disabled in our game. Capture the Flag is also a team mode, but it's a little bit more complex because it adds game objects that belong to the teams, the flags. Each game mode consists of a main class, which handles all the necessary interaction and mechanics of the game mode, and a GUI class to display information like scores and time that is left in the round. Let's dig into the meaty multiplayer part of the game modes. Deathmatch only requires us to keep track of the time and how many kills each player has. We'll handle both of those with custom properties, but there are two different kinds of custom properties. To synchronize the round time, we instruct the master client to store photonetwork.time in the room's custom properties as soon as the game is started. Just like we did with the map view before. As we learned in the first part of the series, photonetwork.time is synchronized automatically by Photon. By storing its value when the game is created, each client can calculate itself when the round is going to end. To store each player's kill count in the room's custom properties would be a hassle because we would be responsible to assign each kill count to the correct player and clean up the properties when the players leave the match. Luckily, Photon provides us with another type of custom properties that belong to each player. You can access these custom properties through the Photon Player object that gets created for each player. To access the Photon Player object of the local player, you can simply call the shortcut photonetwork.player. But you'll also need to find the Photon Player objects from all other players to be able to get their score and for example, display them in a list. There are two ways to do this. The quickest way is to access photonetwork.playerList, which is an array of all the Photon Player objects that are in the current room. Another way is to use the owner property of each Photon View. As a reminder, the ship objects in our game all have a Photon View component assigned to it, which handles communication with the server. Each ship object is created through Photon's instantiate method, and in turn, Photon automatically stores which player created which ship. So by getting all the Photon View components from each ship and accessing their owner properties, we can quickly get all the Photon players and know which ship they belong to. You'll notice that I wrote a small helper function to get and set custom properties. Because I want to ensure that the game works online and offline, I have to provide an alternative to the custom properties when the game is played in offline mode. This is what the helper method does. It checks whether we are online or not, and either gets or sets the value locally when we are offline, or stores it in the player's custom properties when we are online. Since we want to do the same thing later for the flag capture count, this helper method will come in handy to keep code duplication low. And really, this is all there is to to store gameplay relevant data. In the first part of this tutorial series, we learned how to synchronize the player's team by using the instantiation data. The difference between a player's custom properties and its instantiation data is that custom properties can be changed at any time during the game by any client. The instantiation data is set only once when the object is created and will never change during the lifetime of the object. Both are useful in different scenarios. The Capture the Flag game mode adds some more values that need to be synchronized like how many times the flag has been captured by a team, which is implemented as a room property, or how many times each player has grabbed or captured a flag, which again is implemented as a player property, just like the kill count. And lastly, we also have to share which map is currently being played between all clients and make sure that each one has loaded the correct one. Next to the green mountain ridge map we created last time, 
I've also created a city map. Not only is it a lot of fun to race through the narrow gaps between the skyscrapers, the second map also helps us demonstrate how map loading works in a multiplayer game. When we join a new room through the room browser, we do this ourselves. The currently played map is always stored in the room's custom properties by the master client, so we can simply access this property and use it in Unity's regular load level function. However, Photon also has a way to simplify this for us. If we set Photon Network dot automatically sync scene to true, the master client can simply use the function Photon Network dot load level instead of the Unity one, and Photon makes sure that all players will follow the master client to the new scene. This way, we don't have to think twice about level loading, and Photon ensures throughout the game that all players that are in the same room, are also on the same map. You now know everything there is to custom properties on rooms and players, and how you can use them to synchronize game states. Remember that custom properties can be changed by any player at any time, so if you're worried about cheaters, then you have to think about clever ways to protect your those values. However, this would be beyond the scope of the series for now. We will talk about cheat protection in a future part, but don't hold yourself back because of cheaters. You should try to make a fun game first, and make it work properly, before you worry about cheat protection. Otherwise, you will not get anything done at all. In the next video, we are going to talk about how matchmaking can replace a room browser altogether and the different types of matchmaking you can do with Photon.